So we'll keep looking for uh, good ways to analyze g of alpha of n as we go, um, and this is a really good starting place. And in fact, um, one of the things we can say is that if you take alpha and you exponentiate it with itself, you do a double up k, um, it's an easy application of the exponent rule that we have, uh, that g of that applied to n is just going to be whatever g alpha of n was, double up k. And that's really useful because psi, uh, one of the rules, the only rule we've actually learned so far for psi is the successor rule, which I have to admit we're going to have to uh, see some special exceptions to. Um, but as long as the successor rule that I've told you works for psi, then this is exactly um, how that's going to interact with g. So psi of alpha plus 1, you get by taking psi of alpha, and you double up that by n. Um, and then so g of that is just going to be whatever g of psi alpha was at n, and then double up n. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward thing. And it shows you that double ups are just going to be all over this place. Now you might think from our experience, oh, that means double ups are going to be over all over the place for like two minutes, and then it's going to go to triple ups and quadruple ups, and we're going to see it's not not quite that same story. But let's let's see what happens. Okay, so for example, um, that finally gets us to um, analyzing g of psi of one. Uh, so g of psi of one. Well, psi of one is supposed to be psi of zero, or the nth uh, term in the fundamental sequence for psi of one is psi of zero double up n. Exponentiate itself by, uh, exponentiate by itself n times, and then the g of that is just going to be g of psi of 0 evaluated at n double up n. So what are we getting? Well, g of psi of 0 was pretty decently big. For once, g, this was where g, this was epsilon naught, because uh, psi of 0 is just epsilon naught. And g, this is where g finally came into its own as being something more than just, it's an ordinary number, it's a double up. And then we double up it with n. Okay, so important remember when we're thinking when we're using g as a tool it's important to realize just how big a deal that is um, that if we think about that as a shadow of f f of psi of one and we'll talk about exactly what ordinal psi of one is in a, in a minute um, that's going to be so much bigger than just f of epsilon naught that function is going to grow much quicker than f sub epsilon naught um, because remember, a plus 1 was a significant increase for g, and a times n was a significant increase, and getting to n double up n itself was a big deal and, and indicated how incredibly fast-growing f of epsilon naught was. Um, it's even bigger than just than exponentiating it by n. It's double upping it by n. So you want to remember that even though this is not like a huge, huge, huge thing by our fast-growing standards, it's really a, a pretty significant improvement. Um, on G. Now, why am I not just abbreviating that as n triple up 3? So take a look at it and see if you can see why I'm not abbreviating it that way. It's because it isn't. Okay, it's not n triple up 3. The parentheses are wrong. Okay, so n triple up 3, remember, is you take n double up n and then you put that in the exponent slot or the, you know, the, the second slot of the double up, the more powerful slot. And this was all about creating fast-growing big numbers, is you put something, you diagonalize or you recycle into the biggest slot, the most sensitive slot. That is much, much, much bigger than putting the n double up n in the base slot or the first slot of the double up. Okay, so it's not triple up. Um, so we don't want to overestimate and say how big g is here. It's a significant increase over at just n double up n. Um, and by any pedestrian standards, you know, take four double up four, and then double up that by four, you're, it's going to seem like a big number, okay, a much bigger number. But it's not triple up, okay? So we're going to have to be a little careful about that. And remember, g is a slow-growing function. There's a reason it's called the slow-growing hierarchy. It's really reluctant to participate in the kind of leaps um, and, and, the, and the structures that the fast-growing hierarchy has access to. It's just not designed to do that. Okay, um, so psi of 1, the, the lesson here is psi of 1 is a much bigger ordinal than psi of, of 0. You really should think about it. But it's not so enormously big as to get this very reluctant function g up to the n triple up 3 level, much less n triple up n or something like that. Okay, so, um, okay, so let's keep going. What about g of psi of 2? Okay, um, so psi of 2, by our definition, is uh, an, an ordinal whose fundamental sequence is created by just taking psi of 1 and raising itself to, to powers, in other words, doing a, a double up n, 
Okay, um, can use the same same rule. So that's just g of psi of one of n double up n, but we know the c of g of psi of one. So that's that expression, and then double up that, but again with the parentheses in the wrong place if we really wanted to get the biggest number possible out of four letter n's and three double up symbols. Okay, um, so this isn't really what we're used to. We don't have a pre-existing compact notation for this, like we had like triple up when the parentheses were different. So let me just have a notation here. It it doesn't really have a whole lot of content, but it makes this it puts it into the functional notation paradigm. So I'm going to say d for double up. D sub n of m is what happens if you take m and you double up it by n. So I'm really just sort of reshuffling how the m's and n's work. But I'm having, but putting it into this situation where I can easily use functional powers. So this is what this is really good for. D sub n to the k is at the usual notion of a functional power of m, which means take m, double up it by n, and then double up it by n again, and then double up it by n again, and again and again, k times. Okay. And again, again, this is very different from uh, a triple up, and it's much 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 weaker. Okay. So um, we can summarize. The, the two examples we've just did, done, psi of 1 and psi of 2, and expand and sort of see what the pattern is by saying that, well, psi of k, every time you go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 and increase this, this index, you're just, all you're doing is you're doing the, the d sub n operation one more time. Psi of 0 was already one double up. It was already epsilon naught and already had the n double up here. That's kind of because it's a little bit because we gave psi a little bit of a head start here by starting it at epsilon naught, such an, a decently powerful ordinal. Um, and that's why there's a k plus 1 here. Okay, So we're just taking n double up, n double up, n double up, n double up, n with the, the slow growing parenthesis structure. Okay, So hopefully this is a pretty easy uh, generalization of the, the examples we've had. Okay, So that's nice. That's nice and tidy. Um, we haven't had to approximate anything yet. Um, but, but right about now, we'll start to do that because otherwise, this is just going to—it's going to become very, very cumbersome. Um, partly because we're getting these parentheses in weird ways. Okay, so let me give you a very important approximation here. Um, the intuition we have, and I think by this time in the videos you'd have this intuition, is of course that any with any of one of our standard operations, um, the base slot, the left-hand slot, is so much less important than the exponent slot. And unless we have some really small things like x is 1 or l is 1 or 2 maybe might screw it up, as long as we avoid um, some, some sort of degenerate cases, here's a way to think about this idea of double upping and then double upping again. Um, so you're going to take some number k, you're going to double up at k times, and then you're going to double up at l times. Um, so let me see. So that's x double up k, and I'm, I'm going to write this notation of um, it's, it's handy sometimes to unpack this. It's, by definition, it's this number. I'm not unpacking that one yet. Um, and then the operation of take that and raise in the ordinary way to a power L minus 1 times, and then at the top of the stack, this is just writing out a stack of exponentials without having to do the, all the tiny little superscripts. And then at the top of the stack is one more instance of this number, x double up k. Okay. So we're taking x double up k, and we're using and we're doing exponentiation with this base, and then exponentiation with that base, and then exponentiation with that base over and over again. So it's unpacking the definition of the second double up. Okay, um, let me just write this one. This one again, unpacking this double up here, um, as take one, and just x do the x to the power, the exponential with base x operation x times. So that's just unpacking in one line what x to the 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 x k times. OK, now here's the really important thing, is that we know that the base slot is just not as important. This number, x double up k, is going to be huge. And it's in the exponent slot. And I definitely don't want to mess with that at all. But everything else is in a less important slot. And so what we're going to make what might look like a pretty radical uh, approximation, which is x double up k, we're going to say, you know what, I'm just going to call that x. It's really not going to be unbelievably different. So now it's just x, um, exponentiation with base x done l minus 1 times on, oh, hey, here's 1, and I did exponentiation with base x k times. Well, that's what, it, what happens if I take 1 and I exponentiate it with base x k times, 
and then I exponentiate it with base x l minus 1 times, and this is in, this is with the parentheses in the right way to actually take that single up repeated and make a double up. So, the, the upshot of it is, is that it's roughly x double up k plus l minus 1. Um, which is definitely simpler than having this iterated double up structure, and a lot simpler once we do iterated double ups like up here many, many times. Okay, and we're just going to see this as approximately as a double up with a, a fairly simple predictable second slot, uh, like the exponent slot. Okay, to be precise, what this says is that again, with some restrictions on x and x and k and l, which uh, we'll never need to worry about as long as we don't plug in ones and twos, which I tend to never do, um, into explicit examples. Um, this operation that we're trying to th think about with the, the two double ups in the kind of the wrong order is between x double up k plus l minus 1 and x double up k plus l. And you can really prove that more carefully and I don't want to bother it um, with it. But if you do an, like if you do an example with like 3, 3, 3 or something like that um, and you try to work it out, you can convince yourself that it's much closer to this guy and it's certainly certainly a lot less than the, than the right-hand thing, okay? So the approximation is good in, of course, our very weird sense that these are already such huge numbers that um, in any ordinary sense, the left-hand thing here is much, much, much less than this. But in our sense, as opposed, like, comparing it to how close it is to the right-hand side, it's actually going to be a good approximation. So we're going to use that approximation very freely. So for example, and we'll just do this and then, and then cut off this video, so let's go back to psi of k. Um, psi of k, the g of that at the nth stage, okay, is going to be, again, uh, something we that's rel relatively simple to write still, n double up n, and then double and then n double up it k times on the right. And what's that going to do? It's going to take n double up n, that's what we started with, and what's it uh, going to do when it's going to add n minus 1? So, right, so this is the case where that's going to turn into n and that's going to turn into n, and that's going to turn into n and n. So we're taking that n and we're adding n minus 1 to it. And then we're adding n to minus 1 to it again, and then again, and then again, and that's going to happen k times. So you're going to take our base n, our, our, our starting um, exponent, if you will, n, and take n minus 1 and add uh, k times. Okay, so uh, that's a good place to stop this one. I know we're still at the very beginning. We're at psi of like a finite number. Oh my gosh, psi is supposed to be something that takes ordinals to ordinals, and it's supposed to involve uncountable ordinals, which is big omega. We'll get there, but I don't think it makes sense to rush it.